Hey, what's up? It's Comic95 The Savior. For this video, I'm going to give you guys 20 questions that I hate Japanese people asking me, some of which are just pet peeves because you've been asked so many times, whereas others are just flat out rude, racist, and or annoying. This is my own personal list. If you've been living here for any length of time, you may agree or disagree, you may have your own things that you find to be annoying, but this is personally how I feel. I will make a separate video on dumb questions that people ask or say to me, like things they think, because I am black, and some of those things might actually be in this list too, but I'll make a separate video for that. Intersectionality does play a part sometimes here in Japan, and while I can't speak for every white person here, to be honest, I don't really have any black friends here. I know some people that are black, but I mostly hang out with white people that are from Europe, such as like the UK, Australia, etc. And with that said and done, I find that some of the things I get asked, my white friends have not been asked. So anyway, moving along, 20 questions. So number one. You can use chopsticks. Um, I hope I can. I've been here for a pretty good minute and I try to avoid using a fork. Even although a lot of times people just hand me one with or without me asking, I can say I want chopsticks. They'll give me a fork. It's like, no, chopsticks. Like People like freak out and like don't know what to give me, so they'll oftentimes like put both inside the bag, which that used to irritate me, but now that I've been here for a minute, I'm like, eh have an extra eating utensil to use for later but I normally try to correct it because I want them to know just because I'm not Asian does not mean that I can't use chopsticks. Oddly enough though for some reason <laughs> people seem to either assume that I because I normally will talk to people in Japanese from going out and I'm not with my friends or something um, I will tell them <laughs> You know, I'll have a conversation with them in Japanese, like to tell them what my bento warmed, etc. So they'll think, oh, like people ask me, oh, are you half? Or they'll assume that I'm from some other Asian country, like, oh, like, she must be Thai because my skin is dark or Malaysian or whatever. But getting too sidetracked in this, let's keep going. Number two, your Japanese is so good. Really? All I did was introduce myself. People assume that you can't speak Japanese once again, so simple small things impresses people. I literally was having a lesson with one of my students, I'll never forget this, this is back in Tokyo, and we just so happened to have ran into one of her classmates from high school, mind you that she's like in her 30s, so she's older than me. And when I met her friend, she like introduced her friend to me, all I said was, Hajimemashite. And she like freaked out, she was like, oh, do you speak Japanese? And back then I really didn't, I was just like, no. <laughs> and so like she insisted like oh like you know Japanese is so good like she kept saying like so good, so good like over and over again and I'm like okay yeah it's really easy to impress people here so it makes it easy for you to learn it encourages you because people like keep telling you your Japanese is so good even though it sucks and I'm like oh my Japanese is good <laughs> number three do you like Japanese men this question kind of irritates me because people like quickly ask this after like I tell them that I plan to be here like for a while or forever and so they instantly think oh it's impossible to live in another country unless you like the people. You don't have to like Japanese men or Japanese women in order to live in Japan. That is a huge and stupid myth. Yes it is true that in my opinion I would say most people here are open to dating Asians or they specifically like Japanese people but you most certainly don't have to and to be honest if my boyfriend and I were to break up and he is Japanese I'd probably date another black guy just being real or a German guy. <laughs> Number four I believe we're on. It's my dream to marry a foreigner. So it's why, why would I want, how do I reply to that? It's my dream to marry a Japanese guy? Just such a strange thing to say. And number five, similar to number four, um, I like foreign girls' bodies. So I get this is supposed to be a compliment, but again, it just seems like you're fetishizing me and I'm probably right. Such a creepy statement and once again, how do I reply to this? Thank you, creep. Number six. Please teach me English. Why would I want to teach you something that I charge people for? 
and what smart person would want people to use them or just be their friend because of what country they come from or what language they speak. No sane person would want that and it's a total turn off. It's somewhat insulting because if I'm in a foreign country, the last thing I want is fake friends. Nobody likes being used. I'm not using you to learn Japanese. I'm not using you to teach me Japanese history or to learn about anime. So please don't use me for your fantasized Hollywood dreams or as a cheap, free way to practice your English. Total turn off. I'm no dummy, of course. I know if you're talking to me. You have some interest in foreigners and English language. But just like how you wouldn't want people like that in America, people that are just talking to you because, you know, you're from Japan, the land of hentai <laughs> and video games, nobody wants the reverse of that either. It's an insult and it's kind of sad. People want real friends, not, I don't know, leeches. People using them to look cool. Ah, the infamous question, number seven. Why didn't you come to Japan? It seems so innocent, but you get asked this so much and it's so annoying, so why does it matter? In America, people don't normally ask you why you came to America, and let's be real, if you've ever been to college in America, there is a huge population of Asian students on American campuses. A lot of Asians dream of coming to America, yet people don't ever ask them. It gets asked, but you know what I mean. It's not a regular question. People do not say, oh, do you like white guys? Do you like black guys? Do you like white girls? Do you like Hollywood? Well, it's kind of annoying when you ask me, oh, why did you come to Japan? You like cosplay? You like anime? You like video games? Like, Japan did not invent all of these things. And really, America, in my opinion, kind of took the things that Japan did invent and make them kind of better. For example, cosplay. <laughs> But we're not going to get into that argument. It's just an annoying question and it implies that you can't be in Japan without liking pop culture. Double standard. Nobody complains about Japanese people coming to America because of Netflix, the Friends TV show, watching Marvel movies, etc. And I'm tired of patting your country on it, you know, the back and, you know, I don't know how to explain it. But they like hearing you like brag about the things that you like about Japan and they know that you're going to say that you're here for the same things. You're gonna say, oh, I like Japanese culture. Or you're gonna say, oh, I like anime or like whatever. And so it's a pet peeve, like I said, it doesn't really matter. But just being real, I hate being asked a question. It gets so annoying. I don't ask people that in America when I went to college there. And I most certainly hate being asked this question here in Japan. It's none of your damn business. <laughs> and similar to number seven, we have number eight. Am I doing my numbers right? Okay, I think that's eight. <laughs> When will you go back home? Again, seems like an innocent question, but imagine if I asked this to every Asian person that I met on campus in America. Now, if the person is really from overseas, like they are directly from China and they're doing a study abroad, they might not care. But imagine not knowing whether that person is actually from China or if they're Asian American. Now my question just came off as super racist and ignorant. Well, that's how you kind of feel here. Sure, I'm not half Japanese, but you don't know that. And on top of that, it's just an ignorant question. Are you paying for my flight back home? Why does it concern you? Like, if I know you personally, it's cool to ask, like, hey, how long do you plan to stay here? But like, for the start of a conversation, when are you going back home? Like, to assume that I'm going to go back home. And this all falls into the stereotype that foreigners do not like Japan. They will eventually get homesick and go home because of all the many rules here. And basically that your life here revolves around love. Which is also why schools don't expect female teachers to last long. They are the first to go home due to difficulties with dating, marriage, relationships, kids, etc. It's a stereotype, as with most stereotypes, a little bit of truth to it, but you get what I'm saying. It's an annoying, stupid question. If you ain't paying for my ticket, ain't none of your business. Don't ask. Number nine. This is a two-fold question. So, where do you teach? You teach English, let me guess. Okay, you're not wrong. I actually do teach English. But again, it's the equivalent of imagine in America, I say, oh, <laughs> let me guess. You work at the beauty supply down the street. Or, oh, your mother owns that Chinese see-through kitchen. Sounds a little bit racist. And once again, why would I want to tell you where I work at, creep? I don't want you showing up at my job. That's personal. Number 10. Once again, another racist, stupid, ignorant question. Oh yeah, I know. Japanese is really difficult for foreigners. This is normally a statement that is made after I tell someone that 
I don't really speak Japanese or oh, I know a little bit or whatever. Or if you tell them that you do, you know, speak Japanese, they will follow up with that statement. Now it sounds innocent, but again, imagine if you were in an English speaking country and everyone said, oh I know English is really difficult. Yeah, I know English is really hard for Asians. It's a really racist statement, so I don't appreciate people saying that to me. And again, it's a stereotype they've been taught here. It's not just like a one-off thing, like it's literally ingrained in their culture. Like even if you have, if you're a teacher, you've probably seen this. If you've ever seen like books here, like on language, <laughs> it's very easy to find an English book where it literally is telling them that it's very difficult <laughs> for foreigners to learn their language. Like they like to hear that for some strange reason. So. Some of you may agree with that, but to be totally honest, if you're actually making an effort to learn Japanese and you're living in Japan in particular, it's extremely easy to learn. In fact, I think Japanese is a lot easier than English because it's more structured. English is based off of memory, like a lot of it. <laughs> Whereas Japanese, there's not really a lot of rules for their grammar. It's very straightforward, there aren't a lot of words to describe things, so the vocabulary list isn't that long and kanji characters help you decode stuff. Um, their, their phonics make sense, like for example in English we have words that are borrowed from other, you know, I'm not explaining it, other countries, like where stuff makes like zero sense, like how you pronounce it. For example, the word pneumonia. You cannot say pneumonia and know how to spell it. My last name is Bolin. You do not spell my last name the same way that, you know, you would spell the sport, Bolin, even though it's pronounced the same way. So, and my last name is German, by the way, but that's another story. So anyway, yeah, I don't like being asked this question because again, it's stupid. It's not really a question. It's more like, yeah, please tell me what I've read about my entire life. Japanese is too hard for foreigners, right? They like hearing that. It's stupid. It's annoying. And it's a little bit racist because if I said to you, oh yeah, I know your English is bad because in America, Asians can't speak English to save their lives. Well, it sounds equally as ignorant hearing it here as a native English speaker in Japan. Kill me. Number 11. Oh, I know you'll like this because many foreigners like this. I get this all the time. I've gotten this from real estate agents showing me, you know, an apartment in Yoyogi, which really pissed me off. Um, back when I was apartment hunting in Tokyo, my real estate agent told me that I was going to like this place because this is where most foreigners live. And I got what she meant, but again, let's flip the script. Imagine showing a place to a Japanese person and saying, oh, you're gonna love Chinatown because this is where all the Asians live. I'm not even gonna go into detail about what's wrong with this, but yeah, stupid statement. And just because a foreigner does or doesn't like something doesn't mean that all of us do. FYI, the people that you're calling foreigners aren't even American, but you're talking about people who are Chinese and European, so. What does it have to do with an American? Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of which, number 12. You like sushi? Oh, foreigners don't like raw meat. Once again, I get it. I assume most tourists here, maybe even in America, don't like it. For example, nobody in my family likes sushi. They do not eat raw meat. The thought of it is ugh. My dad is someone who's adventurous and he will try it, but like, I think he probably would like it too and I made it at home before and he did. But you get what I mean. My family ain't into that and so I could see, okay, fine, a lot of people don't. But again, stupid, racist, ignorant statement. Not really racist, but you get what I mean, like it's stupid. You're categorizing all of us and telling me what I'm not gonna like because of my race or because of my nationality. It's just a stupid statement. I get it, you're shocked because like, oh, you can eat sushi? How and why do you think sushi restaurants exist in America? They have them in New York, they're in Chicago, they're in California, they're everywhere. Yes, there are people that like sushi and being in Japan, I'm obviously, hopefully, willing to try different kinds of food. I love sushi. Don't compare me to other foreigners, please. Number 13. Oh, you can understand that joke? I get this all the time, especially like at work. So at my job, I pretty much work with all Japanese people at my regular job. I'm contracted to different companies, but my like home company, I'm the only teacher. So I have assistant teachers who are Japanese and they oftentimes, as they always do, get into their little small group and they'll start talking amongst themselves and they'll be like really shocked. Like if I join in during the meeting and I'm like, oh, ha, 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 laugh at something and they're like, 
you understood? And then they laugh again, and it's like... <laughs> for some strange reason, I guess because American comedy or humor is hard for them to understand, they assume that we can't understand theirs. But I also don't like it because it's like, I think it's rude for you to like purposefully say things that you think I'm not gonna understand when you're around me. I find that to be disrespectful, so. And that's like one of the complaints people have in America, like when they're getting, I'm not trying to get into that. I know we're not talking about, stay with me people. <laughs> I'm well aware that most people that own nail salons in America are generally Vietnamese or Chinese or even Korean, more so than Japanese. I don't, I've never even been to a Japanese nail salon before. But with that said and done, biggest problem people have is it's rude for them to be speaking in their native language over you while they're doing their nails because they're normally talking loud and you have no idea what they're saying and because they can speak English, you would like for them to do that. I ain't gonna get into argument with you all on your two cents on whether they should or shouldn't, mother tongue, etc. I get it all. But <laughs> what I will say is it can be taken the wrong way. And in this circumstance, we're all working together and we're supposed to be having a meeting. You should probably keep the language in English since this is the designated language for our meeting that we're having, especially since I'm technically over you guys. So it kind of makes it seem like you're trying to play, you know, power, balance, whatever type thing. So I can get into that forever. I don't care. It's helped me build my Japanese understanding. And I like the fact that they think I can't understand them. So it works both ways. Number 14, you can read the menu. Menus here aren't normally that difficult. They're commonly written in hiragana, katakana, and very basic kanji. So if you can read basic kanji, you already mastered hiragana, katakana, you are good to go. And believe it or not, there's normally English menus available. And Japan has gotten smart, and a lot of the menus here, not a lot, but enough of them, actually have English written underneath the menu. Not to mention, if I ever can't read something, you can always just point with your finger. I don't have to talk. But do I? Yes. I will normally try my best to read the menu as is, and I can even use my phone to translate stuff. So please stop being surprised that I don't need the English menu, and stop assuming that I do. It's rude, it's racist, and if you were in America, you wouldn't want people to throw a Chinese menu at you because you have no idea what country I'm from. What if my native language is French? You're assuming that I speak English. You guys lose your crap when people assume that you're Chinese and me how you, so please don't Hello, English menu, me. <laughs> Number 15, where do you buy your clothes? Or are those men's clothes? I am not even kidding you. I've both been on a date and befriended girls here who have asked me dumb shit like that. Now mind you, in Japan I am plus size. I generally wear like this right here that I have on. This is a blouse that I got from Uniqlo. This is a size large that is on me. I think I'm like maybe a Japanese 12 or something. and. I fluctuate between like an 8 to 10 US size. So yes, I am fat. <laughs> I'm a fat ass by Japanese standards. But with that said and done, I'm not the biggest person here in Japan. I see girls bigger than me all the time. And with that said and done, it's really rude, racist, and ignorant for you to assume that I cannot wear you guys' stuff because I'm not you. And mind you, while I am tall in Japan, I'm not that much taller than the average Japanese girl. I'm 162 centimeters tall, which is basically five foot four. The average woman here is the same height as my mother, which is five foot two, or about 157, 58 centimeters. I ain't that much off from that. And with that said and done, yeah, it's just a dumb, they like to hear, they like to believe in, that they're so small and tiny, so they want to know like, oh, like what size do you wear? Yeah, like big foreigners can't wear our shit type thing. Not to mention, as I've said before, there are plus size stores here. Before you guys attack me, I know I'm gonna do a video on that, I promise. Please stop asking me. <laughs> and number six, oh my gosh, 16. <laughs> you can buy shoes here? Yes, I can. I wear a size seven or a size 24 in Japanese. Next question. I'm literally five foot four. Like what size shoe am I supposed to wear? Size 14? <laughs> and sorry, girls with big feet, I'm not trying to insult you. But um, they also have specialty shoe sizes here too. They have plenty of shops here that offer larger sizes. Most shoe stores here uh, carry up to at least a size eight. And generally it can go more like to about a size eight and a half you can find um, at most malls with ease. Once you go beyond a size eight to eight and a half, it's a little bit tricky, but Again, it's like I'm just a little bit taller than you and some of these girls are five foot three So I'm thinking like okay, like you really think I can't find shoes here like they're shocked they're like, 
You bought those shoes here? All of my shoes that you see me wear here, with the exception of those sparkly Ugg boots, I bought them in Japan. I have no shoes from home anymore. The shoes that I bought from home, I threw them away because they got damaged at previous places and or they got worn out. So same difference. Pretty much all of my clothes came from here. I threw away just about everything that I bought from home. So yes, I can wear Japanese clothes. Yes, I can wear you guys' shoes. You're not that small despite what you guys think and most of the clothes in here is one size fits all. Am I skinny? No. Are there stores I can't shop at? Most certainly. Like I said, I'm plus size in Japan. I wear, I think, like a Japanese size 12. So yeah, I am fat. I'm fat in America. I'm fat in America too. So whatever. Number 17. I'm like running out of ways to do this. <laughs> do you like sex? How much? Okay, really rude, really racist, really ignorant. First of all, I'm not a prostitute. You cannot pay me to have sex with you. Secondly, if I were a prostitute and you could pay me to have sex with you, why would I want you to ask me this in front of other people and why are you asking me this online but you're not asking Japanese girls that? Please don't ask that. Do I like sex? Yes, I absolutely love sex, but not with you. With my boyfriend? Absolutely. Please don't ask me dumb stuff like that that you wouldn't want people to ask your own women or yourself. It's ignorant, it's stupid, it's a racist question because they don't ask that to their own people. It's a huge stereotype in Asia, not just Japan, that foreign women are easy and sex hungry pigs, basically. They were just these wild sex animals like how they see in Hollywood movies. And I'm sure there's a bigger stereotype surrounding black women in particular, but they do this with all foreign women. They're like dogs. It's really rude, really racist, and I hate when people do that. It's disrespectful to ask. Please don't do that. Number <laughs> number 18. I went to America before. Everyone was so racist. They said ni hao to me. Everyone thought I was Chinese. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, and guess what? I've been living in Japan for probably longer than you've been in America. And I cannot tell you how many people have assumed that I speak English. And they were damn right, because I do. I am from America, unfortunately. But <laughs> with that said and done, okay. But you don't know that I'm American. So forget about me. You guys speak to every foreign person that you see in English, despite them never opening their mouth. Imagine how German, Italian, and French people feel. I had a French friend who actually spoke better Japanese and could not speak English. <laughs> and people would always talk to her in English by default, despite the fact that her Japanese was actually really, really good. I can't remember if she passed N2 or N3, what she was at, but she was very fluent in Japanese. She could barely speak any English at all, and it was extremely annoying. Why? Because she's a French girl, yet everyone is speaking to her in English. Well, Japanese people, you guys do the same thing you don't like. You don't like being confused with Chinese people and being told ni hao and whatever type stuff in Chinese, but you guys use English to talk to everyone. It's equally as annoying and you guys don't realize that. So yeah, please save your sob. Everybody thinks I'm Chinese story for someone who really cares. Number 19, you live alone? You have an apartment in this neighborhood? I have a job. I can afford an apartment just about anywhere. I don't have children. I don't have a spouse. I have extra money. That's a racist question. Imagine if I said, oh, you can live in this neighborhood? I've never seen an Asian here. I've literally been told by a Japanese guy, oh, I didn't know Americans were living here because I lived in a uppity part of Tokyo. That's a pretty racist and stupid and ignorant statement. Also, I am well aware that the question of asking, oh, where do you live? Do you live alone? Is to try to see if you can have sex with me. If I did live alone, I would not want to be having sex with some cheap dude that ain't got his own apartment living with his mama. No. None of your business, don't ask me. Stupid question. Ignorant statement. And last but not least, number 20. Japanese people aren't racist. They just don't have experience with foreigners. Blah, blah, blah. They're xenophobic. Ha. I get this both from people who are, you know, super defensive over Japan as well as from Japanese people. Yes, indeed, Japanese people most certainly do tend to be racist and are stereotypical. It's just not on the same level that people are in the Western world. The whole crap excuse that you don't have experience with foreigners is really stupid because I can shut that down right now. I never really met an Asian person besides one family friend that was Japanese growing up. That was a family friend, you know, my mother's good friend before she died, RIP. But I had no experience with Asian people until I was a college student and worked with them. 
So despite that being said and done, I didn't run around being prejudiced and racist towards them, making jokes about the way that their face looks or the way that their bodies are or anything else. So to try to justify that by saying like, oh, like, you know, America has so many mixes of people, but Japan has no experience. Racist is racist. We can all learn to do better, but not having exposure has nothing to do with being prejudiced and racist. That's called ignorance. And by ignorance, I mean racism. <laughs> so it is what it is. People can change. You can learn and do better. But not being exposed to people does not make someone more or less racist. It can definitely help you know you learn what not to say and do but it doesn't justify it. People are taught racism mainly from TV because Japanese people like to joke about dark complexions, they like to joke about the appearances of foreigners, the stupidity of foreigners, the obesity of them, all types of stuff. That's exactly where this stuff comes from. So yeah, don't try to play that card. There's plenty of crap that I see both in the news and papers and magazines, even just talking and dating people where people openly say prejudice things towards other Asians. It's not just a black and white thing. I'm not gonna get, you know, carried off into this. I have other videos on this topic, but yes, I hate that one. Um, people commonly will like say like, oh, like, you know, Japan's not racist. They don't mean this in a racist way. They just don't have any experience, blah, blah, blah. Still racist doesn't matter <laughs> so that is that those are my 20 questions that I hate being asked by Japanese people what are some questions that you hated again I will make a separate video talking about things that specifically deal with questions towards my race and our nationality as an American but this was my general video for dumb questions that I get asked all the time some of them are pet peeves some of them are racist ignorant stupid whatever we can agree disagree whatever this is just my own two cents on things that I don't like being asked so tell me about yours. Have you ever been to Japan, dealt with Japanese people? What are some stupid assumptions and or questions that people had for you? Please leave them in the comments down below. Otherwise, I would appreciate it if you would like this video and if you would also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Oh, look at my watch. Eek. I like this watch so much. It's all so cool. I only paid $5 for this, you guys. I bought it from Walmart. I've actually repurchased this watch, I think, twice. But my dad got this from before I came here. But doesn't that look nice? This came from Walmart, you guys. People, I get compliments on this all the time from Japanese people. They're like, oh. Like, my cashier actually pointed to my watch and touched it, which was kind of, it was a weird thing for a Japanese person to do because they don't normally, like, compliment you like that. Like, strangers don't, especially not, like, jewelry. But I couldn't explain to her at the time that it was fake. But I think people think this watch is real. Like it's really like a diamond watch or something. But okay, I'm done. Bye. <laughs>